Hey, my name is Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe, and super awesome that you're here today. I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years, and I switched to data science and data engineering about four years ago. And I'm here to share a few little things that I picked up along the way with you. And today let's talk about natural language processing, also called NLP. And let's talk about engrams. What are engrams for? And what might be some problems with engrams? So let's dive into it. So how does basic text processing even work? Since machine learning models can't do anything with words, they need numbers. So the first step is we need to translate the words into numbers. This is usually done using a back of words approach, where the corpus is separated into words and every word that is in this corpus gets assigned an index. So a word like this might have the index one, is might be the index two, uh, might be an index three, word might be index four. Hmm. Quite simple, isn't it? Yeah, you don't even have to code it yourself since there are libraries that provide all the functionality already for you. For example, in sklearn, there is the count vectorizer that does exactly that. And that being said, now we have all the words separated and we can basically uh, use them for predicting uh, the next word or using segmentation as some sort of classifier. But what about cases where there is a changed meaning of a word depending on another word? For example, not good. In this case, the earlier approach of having those single words um, falls kind of short. So we need to come up with something and this is exactly where engrams come into place. But before I tell you about engrams, please consider going completely insane on that like button and also maybe leave a small little comment down below. So the n in engrams is basically just a placeholder or a variable for a number. So the usual values for this n is one, like in the example I just gave you, just one single word. Then there is two, which is also called a b-gram. And maybe three, which is a three-gram, and so on and so forth. And what this does is basically, in case of a b-gram, it scans the corpus and collects all the two-word pairs that it can find and creates a bag of word out of those instead of a single word. This enables us to also catch things as not good, and yeah, other things like that. Some libraries even allow you to specify n-gram ranges, where you can, for example, specify a range from one to three, and that library will then basically create all the n-grams that consist of one word, two words, or for example, three words. And one such example is again the count vectorizer in sklearn. That um, class has a um, parameter where you can specify an n-gram range and it will create everything for you. So you don't even need to do anything else than specifying the range that you want to have. And as I said, this kind of solves the problems of those um, combined word meanings. But there are also problems with uh, n-grams. It's not all super nice and sunshine. There are also some issues that you need to be aware of. So in case you pick an n that is quite big, for example, like 20, then you get um, a bag of words of all the 20 word combinations that are in your text. And further down the line, when you try to actually match it against other documents and so on, those might not match anymore because you won't find occurrences of those 20 words in, in the other texts, right? And the other thing is if you go overboard with um, the n-gram ranges, for example, then uh, you also introduce uh, a lot of overhead in terms of memory. Since that bag of words that you create needs to live in memory somehow, and even when you just use b grams or three grams, you already increase the needed memory for your model uh, quite some, dependent on the corpus, of course, in contrast of using a single word bag of words. Also, if that bag of words gets too large, it uh, will also introduce uh, issues with your model because of the sparseness of the inputs that it uh, then expects. So you might also be in need to put some other countermeasures into place where, for example, you ignore parts of it and yeah, stuff like that. So keep that in mind, but in general, Engrams are a good thing, but you need to use them in a sane fashion and always ask yourself, does it make sense what I'm currently doing? And also have a look again uh, on the size 
of uh, yeah the memory usage and the back of words and so on and so forth yeah that's basically it for that video thank you very much for joining me today i hope you got some value out of it if so please go completely insane on that like button leave a comment down below and see you in the next video so far bye